what's going on move the mouse here in tiny glade and i wanted to make a tutorial of sorts but honestly it's it's just going to be more of a let's play i'm going to kind of info dump all the things i've learned so far we'll quickly use uh, all the different tools and uncover some tips and tricks that are hiding beneath the surface so we'll just kind of go through everything when you're creating a house you can plop it down and then adjust the size of things so you can look for these little arrows around the structure and uh, whoop, and, and drag it out. And it's actually a little clunky to do it that way. If you want to modify a, uh, a certain block, you can actually right click on it and you'll see all the, the various modifiers all at once. So this little four way arrow, I can move it around. We can see the side markers on each wall, even the far side that we're not looking at. I can still grab that arrow. You can also go down to the uh, the rotation, of course. And we can also grab the roof. Let me get a, a different angle here and kind of change the angle there. Change the height of the roof as well. And we can change the orientation of the pitch. So there's some cool little tools. Um, I don't think you can... You have to click off of it and then grab the roof again to either curve it out or slant it in like that. But again, if you right click, you can unlock all these creative tools at once, including the ability to change that orientation. I found that after messing around quite a bit, I, I didn't notice what that icon was. So check that one out. Now, before we just plop down a thing and then adjusted it after the fact, in this case, if we click and hold, we can change the shape of what we're about to put down. So in this case, let's do full size and we'll shrink the roof and we'll even bring this down a bit closer to the ground to illustrate uh, something I want to show in a moment here. Let's do that again though. And this time we're going to come here down here to the paintbrush and select this. And if you see here, we can put up these, you know, little wood, little wood accents. But when that, uh, when we do that, it also puts up railings. So that's how you can adjust that. And if we wanted to, now we can come back in. Whoop, whoop, nope. Now we come back in here and we can we can bring this whole thing down. Um, and this is how you can build, you know, little bridges. We can do that. Now, if we actually raise this for a minute, we'll come down here and you can lift the bottom up. And now shrink that back down. So there we've got a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a footbridge. We can run water under that. And if we have a footpath on either side, we may have to lower it just a little bit. There we go. So if we have a footpath on either side, it'll actually create uh, those stairs for us. And in this case, it kind of did it all the way around that side. So we can come over here with the eraser uh, and just erase that little bit of path, hopefully. Like that, there we go. Now let's actually, uh, I'm gonna undo a bit and, and reset things here. Uh, I'm gonna grab this structure and let's get it as close as we can as the, the height to the other one. Uh, let's see, right here. Right there, that's that's good enough. So again, we can get rid of these bits on the side by putting down uh, a footpath and create stairs. So that's one way we can get rid of those Merlins or uh, the wood rails if we had applied this paint, right? It would be a wood rail. But in this case, there's a different way we can get rid of those and it's actually kind of quirky. Um, if we grab this slab and put it right on top of the other one in just the right way, uh, it actually hides them. Now for this, I'm holding control to turn off snapping. And we got, oh, it was there for a second. It was there for a second. And then I think I let go of the snap. Come on, there, there it is. And then we let it go. And we've gotten rid of the Merlins that way by putting two slabs perfectly on top of one another. Now, again, you could do that with 
uh, the footpaths, but the footpaths, you know, turn it into stairs and it changes the look a lot and it may not be what you're going for everywhere at least. So that is a really uh, powerful creative little trick you can use is just uh, put the two foundations right on top of one another and it will make those Merlins disappear. Same thing with the handrails. Again, if it has the um, uh, the wood, whatever the, the wood style paneling paint applied, this one, this one. So you can see one of those actually has uh, rails applied, but it isn't there until, until we move it. So very cool stuff, very useful trick. Hopefully that uh, is new to some of you. So let's swing around here for a minute. If we use a footpath into a wall, uh, if we use a footpath into a wall, it becomes a door or uh, an archway or a support, okay? So we'll do some different things there, depending on what you run it into. Uh, that is not possible up here though. So let's actually undo those steps. Um, we can't draw a footpath up here, but what you can do is you can grab a window and we can turn that into a door or we can turn it into a trap door in the floor, which is kind of cool. And you'll notice like these little, little fruit baskets and stuff appearing. Um, that'll change like as you bring certain objects in and around, it'll actually change um, what's animating nearby. You can see there's a, a shovel that keeps appearing depending on where this door is. So that's a door that we can place down as a window. And this is a door as a path leading up and it's dependent on how wide that is. So if we delete some of the path, it'll actually make a smaller door. We could adjust that after the fact though. So we can do some cool things uh, with that approach. The other thing is let me get some water going over here. And if we do that same thing, create a footpath through the water. It's actually a little weird seeing inside the house. Um, but you know, you can do some really cool stuff with that. And again, if we want to modify this gate now, we can do that, but you'll notice it, it moves all the doors on that wall. But this is, I think, a really cool trick for sewers and the, the ducks. Absolutely love it, apparently. Hope you do too. Let's make a bridge. In this case, we'll bridge uh, between two structures. Uh, let's, okay, we'll bring that all the way up. And we'll bring that all the way up. And we'll do the same thing again. Beautiful, okay. So we've got our two towers. And now we want to connect them. So I'm just going to kind of roughly line this up. So that is close enough for now, but that's created a wall that hasn't created a bridge, right? So what we can do is from the bottom of this is raise this up to about where we want it. And then you're going to bring the top back down. So we've created this bridge. It does do bracing automatically underneath, which is real. Whoa, hey, come back. Um, it does do bracing, which is really cool. And also now that we have these, uh, these paths here, we can place doors and using that same tool, uh, we can create a window. Now this is uh, a pretty cool thing. Let me, uh, let me expand these a little bit. Don't mind the fact that the bridge is gonna be off center now. I mean, I guess we could adjust it too. Okay, everybody, everybody happy now? So we've got a little bit more space to deal with here. Windows, this is really cool. So put uh, a window down, click it again to change what it is. Maybe it's laundry, maybe it's a flower box, maybe it's just a window. You can also put two next to one another and again click it for some variation shutters no shutters laundry and then we can also add a third window and that has i think flower box and then no variation or just a standard variation so uh while that's here if we grab that whoop if we grab that window and drag it up it will actually 
uh, build itself correctly into the, the roof of the house, which is nice. And same thing if that window is down here and we go down into it, it'll it'll do the same thing. It'll eventually delete the window, but uh, you can do that with this window as well. So you can do a one, two, or three panel. Uh, three panel. No! That's not the one. Undo. This one. There we go. So we can get a nice little triple panel there. Now check this out, this is cool. I don't know if this is too far apart, it might be. But we're gonna get a window with some laundry and a window with some laundry. We'll get this bridge out of here for now. And if these two are close enough, you get some laundry lines. And that's just like, it's just this cool, cool little thing. Um, you could definitely use this to create some some life in a, a town that is otherwise only populated by sheeps and ducks. I should mention before I forget that you can do the same with flags and that will actually create a more uniform look. But I kind of like the craziness of the laundry hanging out there. You could certainly uh, use these things in, in combination. I don't, can, you, can we paint those? You can't paint those, can you? No, I guess not. Hopefully someday. Never mind. Never mind. You can. <laughs> Hopefully someday. Listen to me. Uh, no, that's very cool. Awesome. The closest thing we have to to my orange. Double F six thousand devs, if you're listening and wanna wanna help a creator out. Double F six thousand orange, please. While we have our towers here, let me grab this one and drag it through. We can even shorten the other side, and you can create. And create little balconies. Delete that window. We'll delete this. Then we'll put a regular door here. There you go. And again, those will have just like the footbridge, the little bracings underneath. So we can do some pretty cool stuff there. Let's talk about terrain for a minute. So we can start to paint around and raise an area. I'm gonna let that go. And now I can click to drag up or down. And then you can drag left or right to affect the steepness of the slope. And you can really make it blend into an area much, much better. I mean, that's a dramatic hill that at least now it wouldn't look crazy to have, you know, a footpath coming up it. Let's talk about walls for a minute. So these can snap to objects and you can drag them straight. You can also bend them all kinds of crazy ways, including through themselves. If we footpath through there, that will create little archways. If we right click on the wall, we can also choose a cut point at one of these dots. I'll make another cut point over here. And that has created three different walls now. Let me show you what I mean. If I go into delete, I can delete just that segment that I cut. Otherwise, if I have a really long, crazy wall that goes all sorts of places, when I go to delete it, I'm deleting the whole thing. So again, you can right click on a wall and then choose those points where you want the cuts and then come in and hammer it out. One more tip with walls. I'm gonna drop this back one left to right and the front one right to left. If we put some windows on the wall, we can see that it's facing outwards. That's the outside of the wall. If we do the same thing over here, you'll notice that it's facing inwards. So the side uh, that the, the decals basically are going to be applied uh, does matter which way the wall was drawn. So it'll treat those differently. Um, man, I can't even can't even hit a door there. So to keep that in mind, it's interesting if you're if you're trying to make some cutouts or make something happen with a wall and it's not doing quite what you want. Uh, try drawing it the other way and it might fix your problem. It's pretty intuitive, but it's worth mentioning that flowers can have a footpath run through them. So you don't have to go in and, you know, erase... Where is it? You don't have to go in and erase the flowers first. 
to then make room for the footpath, you can just have the, the footpath come in there. Um, and if you grab flowers, you can paint over, make it pretty crazy, but it still won't paint over where the footpaths were. And again, footpaths win. So if we wanna carve out even more space, very useful to know the order of operations when it comes to these tools, saves you a lot of extra clicking. We talked about flowers and footpaths, uh, ponds and footpaths work kind of the same way. Uh, you don't have to get rid of it. It'll actually create uh, some stepping stones through your pond, which unfortunately the duck and the fish now look separated. Can they, can they get through? Are they swimming around? Are they actually swimming around the rocks? They're good. Okay. They're all one happy family again and the ducks can fly and walk. So they're, they're fine. Plus they got pats. Come here, fish. Come here, fish. You won't meet fish. Won't let me pet them. All right, one last tip I want to show you is uh, some different ways you can create pillars and things like that. So of course you could, you know, draw another house object, uh, and then kind of, um, mess around with the shape of this. And rather than be on the ground like that, right? We could, you know, kind of like embed this into the house and that's how we can do balconies and things like that. And we can even add, um, you know, supports and, and mess around with different things like that. There's another way that we can create vertical divides though. So let's delete this. When, uh, no. when two objects are right up next to one another in an effort to uh, make them kind of blend the, the game, like you can see there's these bricks in here. It actually added a, a nest up there too, with some eggs in it when the roofs meet, which is kind of cool. But the other thing it does is it creates this little line of bricks in the middle. So if we want to create some interesting lines, what you could do is use the circle, we'll shrink the roof down. We can bring it out just a little bit in size. And then if we embed it just right, just, just right. You get these two lines that, that pop up next to one another and you can create a really cool looking uh, vertical separation in your designs. Uh, good luck ever selecting it again. No, I don't, I don't think you can grab that again as because it's like this extra animation it's bolting on. It's not even the object itself. Well, those are some of the tips and tricks that I've picked up so far. If you know what structure this is, or at least what I'm going for with it, let me know in the comments down below. Hopefully there was at least one tip you picked up that'll make your builds that much more fun. So hope you're enjoying Tiny Glade, whether it's watching or playing. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you're new here, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Until then though, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.